YouTubers, Mike Martin's here, Mike Martin's channel. Tens of thousands of homes are sitting vacant across Canada, says report. Well, guys, if you go back to this channel from a couple of years, even three, four years ago, houses have been sitting vacant for years. And what it is, foreign investing, big bucks coming in from China. Lots of people overseas want to park their money in a safe haven. What better than Canada's housing market? Canada's open for business. Up until, I think, five months ago, they weren't asked any questions on where the money came from until they uncovered that major money laundering scandal, like $200 billion laundered into Canadian housing market. So what happens to a, a country that you introduce a foreign, foreign capital into in a huge amount of numbers? It's very simple. Prices inflate to record proportional prices. And not only that, it, a lot of people get displaced. A lot of Canadian proper gets completely displaced, displaced and bar, bought out of the market. Lo and behold, we have our local media that support us and tell us that it's all good and that's what housing is. And if you don't buy now, you will be completely bought out of the market. Yeah, thank you, media, for that. Anyways, tens of thousands of homes are sitting vacant across Canada, says report. Toronto, the number of vacant homes is like the deserted luxury house of Saskatoon that has garnered national attention, appeared to be on the rise across Canada. The August report by 0.2 Homes estimated there were 1.34 empty million empty and temporarily occupied homes in 2016, the most recent data available. 1.34 million with a country of a population of, what, 30 million, maybe? By analyzing demographic and housing information from Statistics Canada for the country's largest 150 cities from 2006 to 2016, point two homes determined Canada's empty home percent uh, represent 8.7% of the market, increasing from 8.4% in 2006, in contrast. The vacancy rate in the U.S. never climbed higher than 2.8% during the same 10-year time period, according to the Federal Reserve Bank, the, the, the report states. So, 8.4%. Yep. The country's housing problem extends beyond foreign buyers jacking up prices and unaffordability tracking over major cities, the report states. Investor speculation and short-term rentals are the main culprits behind the high vacancy places like Toronto and Vancouver. The report state that 66,000 homes are sitting empty in Toronto and around 64,000 vacant homes are in Mo Montreal, Calgary, and Ottawa and Edmonton. Each have more than 20,000 vacant properties and Vancouver has around 25,000 vacant homes. Out of Canada's 10 largest cities, Winnipeg saw the largest increase of number of empty homes with 42.7% 40, increase, followed by Montreal 36.3% and Edmonton at 32.5%. The 10-year span were found in three cities in Alberta. Grand Prairie saw an increase of 181.4%. Leduc jumped at 172.4%, and Fort Saskatchewan rose 146.8%. The report says all of Atlantic Canada major cities have vacancy rates greater than the 5%. St. John, New Brunswick, seeing 22.7% increase in vacancies, followed by Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, with 21.8%. 5% increase. The British Columbia report city uh, uh, cities, two cities, North Chowin and Port Moody, as representing British Columbia's extremes in North Chowin, experienced 82.6% increase in vacant homes in Port Moody at 50.4% decrease. In 2018, Vancouver, the city council approved a tax on empty homes. Remember this, guys? The vacant home tax, an effort to encourage owners to rent out vacant properties, estimating it, it would bring $30 million in its first year, but officials are not sure if its main goal was accomplished, report says. It was actually, it brought in 20 million, actually. The vacancy problem also extends beyond the estate prices. In Saskatoon, city officials said that a luxury home that was abandoned in 2016 posed serious health and safety concerns to neighbors. The city was set to demolish the home, but has been put on hold after a lawyer representing the owner succeeded in obtaining a temporary reprieve in court. Saskatoon vacancy rates by 35.7% over the 10-year uh, span studied. For Quebec, the cities with the highest percentage of empty homes was Shawinigan with 53.1% increase, Sherbrooke with 36.3% increase, uh, a rise in Montreal with 36.3%. In contrast, six Quebec cities, all of these here, I'm going to read them all out, uh, vacancy rate than less than 2%. The report says Quebec posts the lowest home ownership rates in Canada and the, and the cities in the province have always leaned towards renting than buying. 
14 Ontario cities is experiencing significant drop in vacancies, with 16 of the 56 largest cities in the province achieving the vacancy rate of less than 3% as of 2016, the report states. North Bay, Milton, Waterloo, with the highest vacancy rate increases by 68.2%, 46.5%, and 29.9% rises respectively. Toronto had a decrease in vacancy rates, citing 4.7% over the 10-year span in 2017. The City Council mulled the prospect of a home tax similar to Vancouver's in an effort to address the housing affordability crisis. Toronto uh, chose to do public consulting consultation on the implementation of vacant home tax, but has not yet made the decision. The Government of Ontario implemented 16-point plan to address the housing crisis, and the City of Toronto's enacted a 4% municipal municipal accommodation tax on hotels within Toronto as of the 1st of 2018, which included short-term rentals after June 1st, 2018. Although the number of vacant property levels seem bleak, the reports state that both current analysis and future market prospects point to more balanced conditions overall in the future, citing the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC. Housing starts... Uh, housing starts are forecasts to slow gradually over the 2018 to 2020 forecast horizon moderating from the 10-year high recorded in 2017 to the levels more in line with moderating economic outlook demographic conditions CMHC reports. Now, here goes to this one. So, vacant home tax was a huge problem. Oops. Sorry about that, guys. I'm not sure if this, the screen flip, flipped. But vacant home tax. Oops. Oh, it went to selfie mode. How did how did that how did I do that? Wow, how do I get it out of selfie mode? Okay. So that's that there. So okay guys. Now I brought this up on my channel many times and yeah, I brought this up. Sorry, guys. I brought this up on my channel many times. Vacant homes are a global ep uh, epidemic in Paris. Now, this they had this problem in Paris, and they fixed that problem very quick in a heartbeat. So take a look at this, guys. So this is what Canada needs to do. Vacant homes are a global epidemic, and Paris is fighting it with the 60% tax. So here it is. Run Runaway real estate speculation had been filing global capitals with vacant homes, creating artificial shortages in the world's most sought-after cities. The shortage w has made local homeowners wealthy over Night, but it comes at the cost of uh, turning lively cities into empty shells. The city of Paris has decided it has it's had enough and implemented a tax in 2015. They didn't quite get the results they wanted, so they're now tripling it to 60%. So there it is. Paris has been trying to deal with the vacant property owners for some time, despite warnings that the city will take action. The number of vacant homes there are now 107,000 vacant homes, representing 7.5% of residential dwellings in the city uh, to Francis NC, Deputy Mayor, blah, 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 blah. Uh, 40,000 of these vacant homes aren't even connected to the electrical grid. So you got problems with this. So here it is, guys. I brought this up many times on my channel. There's London, 58,000. Hong Kong, 40,000. Paris, 107,000. Singapore, 29,000. Sydney, Australia, 118. Toronto, 99,000. Vancouver, 66,000. San Francisco, 30,000. And Los Angeles, 213,000. That's why those cities are having a huge issue right now with their uh, massive um, homelessness. So there's one article I want to bring up really quick for you guys, and it all links back to this article. Here it is. Let me just open her up for you guys. This is what happened. We sold out to the highest bidders. Canada wants more Chinese workers, students, and tourists, immigration minister says. So this is what happened. Our government has basically agreed to bring in 500,000 Chinese per year, rich, lucrative, and it's the biggest market in the world. So Canada wants to bring in more, more people. Uh, opening more visa offices can help Canada compete for Chinese workers and students. So uh, human beings have been, I guess, uh, in sight for, whatchamacallit, um, as an economic strategy for the countries. Australia is to blame for it too. So Canada, of course, uh, United Kingdom, they're all competing, and New Zealand, they're all competing for rich investors, right? It got so bad in New Zealand that they don't sell to foreign investing anymore because the local Kiwi proper can't even afford to buy in any one of their own cities. Even if they go 100 miles outside of Auckland, they still can't afford to buy. So 
or Welland or anything, they still can't afford to buy. Or Christchurch, they still can't afford to buy on the wages that they're on. So d wages are what drive up real estate prices. And if it's not wages and the locals driving up the prices, it's not going to work. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below on this. I would like to know what you guys feel about this. It is actually kind of important that we kind of uh, set this up so people can understand where we're headed with this. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to uh, subscribe and share a video if you want to support this transmission.